Hey everybody, I'm JJ. You're watching Reality Survival. So this morning as I'm sitting in traffic headed into Boston, I just uh, was listening to Candace Owens and she's talking about uh, a big scandal in uh, France that is going on and it's just, just kind of bubbling to the surface with Brigitte Macron and uh, Emmanuel Macron. And long story short basically the the accusation is is that um well there's there's a whole lot to it and you you should go listen to her podcast if you're interested in it it's pretty crazy but uh basically the the accusation is is that the macrones were basically installed into office because there's a lot of blackmail uh, available on them and they can be controlled. And I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, you know, uh, that, that obviously is, uh, reminiscent of things that we've heard in our own society, you know, with the Obamas and, and stuff like that. And, you know, even honestly, <laughs> Biden clearly like that there seems to be lots of evidence out there that, you know, could be used because uh, he seems, you know, obviously uh, there's a lot of allegations about his corruption, right? And and the same thing goes with Trump, right? Trump has had a controversial past. Anybody who says that he hasn't is just not being objective about it, whether or not any of it's provable or not. Okay, you know, whatever. However, when, when you start looking at, at European politics and what's going on with Ukraine, um, th this makes a lot of sense as to why Macron has been beating the war drums so, um, you know, so steadily and, 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 and kind of increasing uh, of late. And... It would not surprise me at all if in order to try to get this to go away, because apparently it's a pretty, this is a pretty big deal uh, over there. Now we might not be getting much about it here, but uh, over there it's, it's, you know, apparently pretty scandalous, but it, it really wouldn't surprise me at all with some of these, you know, globalists and stuff if they, if they decided to actually um, put troops in Ukraine and openly start supporting Ukraine and um, force, you know, force the narrative change so that it kind of takes away from this and, and focuses more on the crisis at hand, you know, and that's that's a pretty concerning thing. I mean, as you guys know, I've been I've been pretty worried about um, the conflict spreading, you know, to NATO for couple of years. I mean, that was, you know, what, what we thought could be a possibility, um, early on. And it just, it seems more and more likely that that's going to, that's going to take place. Um, now that doesn't necessarily mean if NATO chooses to back Ukraine, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the NATO countries are then at war with Russia. Um, that would the the article 5 situation basically only happens if another country outside of nato attacks um a nato country then they all have to come for the defense right but if the other country decides to attack a non nato country that doesn't invoke article 5 for all those other people to necessarily be involved now that being said uh poland and uh uh, the Baltic states, they're all, you know, ramping up their militaries as much as they can. They've been putting, you know, defensive bunkers in along the Russian lines and all this kind of stuff. I think they, you know, installed 600 bunkers along the, the Russian front in the Baltic states. Um, you know, so <clears throat> there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts that are happening and, uh, it kind of goes back to something I've talked about a, a number of times, and that is, is that people 
the one consistent thing throughout politics and government is that the people in power will do anything they can to stay in power. That's always true. And if Macron believes that he's been exposed to, to the point to where he could potentially be removed from power and or the handlers, the people who handle him, believe that he's been exposed to the point where he could be removed from power, right? Where their puppet is removed, if the story is true, um, then <laughs> there's a there's a strong likelihood they're going to do something to shift the board, you know, to, to change the focus. And, um, and that just, it, it, it seems, seems likely that the next move on the board is, uh, to start some sort of conventional engagement, um, you know, with Ukraine. And Ukraine's in a, they're in a faltering position as it is. They're getting hit hard. Um, Zeon, Peter Zeon this morning, he talked about um, an upgrade in the, um, in the Russian weapons systems where essentially they've taken, you know, older dumb bombs and, and are modifying them into smart bombs, glide, glide weapons, glide bombs that, that are a little more accurate or considerably more accurate. So I think they took the Thad 1500, which is it's like a 1500 kilo, you know, dumb bomb and they're, and they're basically modifying it. So it's similar in nature to like a J dam, uh, but bigger, right? That's a, it's a big, it's a big payload and pretty devastating weapon. And so if that's the case and if, uh, if the Russian Air Force starts to actively engage uh, in an air campaign utilizing those weapons on a large scale, um, Ukraine's going to be hurting quick. They're going to they're going to be hurting fast. And it's I've I've talked to you guys about this multiple times. I'm like I don't understand why the Russian Air Force is not engaging, um, you know, and and establishing air dominance over the front. Uh, in the way that they are, and supposedly there's an argument for air defenses and all that kind of thing, but th those are those can be taken out, and Russia has the ability to do that. So it's been it's been strange that they haven't. So if they now decide to start prosecuting a significant air war, um, Ukraine's going to have a real hard time with that, and that would likely mean it, it would it would make the decision for NATO countries to go in and um, and start providing boots on the ground support. Now, Trump and Viktor Orban recently met and um, Turkey uh, does not, I think it was, it's Turkey, right? Yeah, I think, I think, I think he's their, their foreign minister. Um, they, they don't want to support it. They don't want to do that. And Trump obviously doesn't want uh, to support it either. And so there's sort of this division of factions. And I think we're in a really interesting place is to see, you know, where this is going to go. And is are the Europeans going to pick up the mantle and, and march forward on this? Or, you know, is the U.S. administration going to throw in support and get us involved in this before the election so that we're already committed. I think that's a huge, that's, that's a certainly a possibility as well. Um, I don't know, but what I will say is that this, this is, it, it feels like this is, this could potentially go kinetic in a, in a bigger way here pretty soon. Um, and a lot of people will say, oh, well, World War III started several years ago or started, you know, wh whatever the case may be. And that's that's fine. I mean, we can, we can make that assessment. I think only history will tell, you know, kind of where, where the, the, the dividing line is. There's no question that cyber attacks are in full swing. France was, was uh, uh, hit really hard with a bunch of cyber attacks um, this last week or so. The... Uh, pharmacy system that we talked about, 
think the day it happened or after it was right after them big solar flares and all that um that is still i think it's still locked down if it, it or no maybe they did pay finally anyway um yeah i think they had to pay like 21 million dollars or something to get their systems unlocked so people can get their their pharmaceuticals um so this there's lots of activity lots of fifth fifth and sixth generation warfare you know lots of information warfare you know all that kind of thing is is certainly active um there's no question about that but what i'm what i'm saying is is i think that the kinetic portion it just it seems it seems very very possible that we might uh we might start seeing a shift in, in all that here here pretty pretty quick so what does that mean what does that mean for you uh that means that you should prepare just like you always prepare <laughs> right i mean make sure that you got your food and water squared away um make sure that you got your uh you know your first aid capabilities all that kind of stuff because what the reason it's not like the it's not like they're going to invade us here in the United States or even if we were involved in Europe, it's not going to probably affect us per se here on the homeland. Just geographically, the way that we're we're laid out, where we are, where we're positioned in the world, that's not real feasible for anybody else in the world to do. Um, but what is super easy uh, to happen is that. And, and it's it's already happening, but to an even ex extended level is Russian active measures and Chinese active measures um, where their intelligence services can basically foment the divisions um, within our own country, right? So you've got you've got radical extremist groups on both the far right and far left. You can play this. You can play this either way. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, just the leftists, right? The the extremists and, and the actual extremists. I'm not talking about the, the normal people in the middle, but I'm talking about the actual extreme far right can be exploited just the same way that the extreme far left can be. Um, intelligence agencies are very good at funding groups and networks like that and utilizing those people to further their ends. QAnon is a perfect example on the far right that, that is absolutely 100% um, Russian active measure. I talked about that long, long ago. Um, you look at things like uh, BLM and uh, Antifa and these Palestinian movements and all that kind of stuff. I without having any evidence i'm just saying I, I i bet anything if you started looking into the funding connections of where all this stuff might starts coming from you're going to find lots of dark money you're going to find lots of um lots of nefarious connections on where these things are coming from and there's there's been some different news stories that have talked about you know some of those possible connections and so uh the point here is is that there's there's for us internally, there's this alliance of factors that can come and start disrupting things. And so for the people in the middle, just like the, you know, the 80% of us that sort of live uh, in, in the middle here, you, you have to be ready for your world to become violent around you. And um, like I said, it's not, it's not going to be some sort of a invasion, but it, it very well could be significant internal disruptions and uh, protests that are, you know, stopping commerce and, you know, eco-terrorism and different kinds of political terrorism and, you know, just all that kind of stuff and, and, and actual terrorism is a possibility. Um, attacks on the electric grid, attacks, you know, just disruption of traffic i'm sitting here in traffic right now you know <laughs> um so the these kinds of things are probably going to become more and more likely so you got to protect yourself you got to make sure you're squared away 
um, because it's, there's, there's likely to be continued disruptions. Um, so anyway, that is, uh, that is that if you guys, um, don't know if you've watched this far and you're not familiar with the channel, you haven't, um, watched me before, then I appreciate it if you click the subscribe button and the thumbs up button. And uh, you can download our cell phone app. It's called American Prepping Academy. Uh, you can download it on both Google and um, the Apple Play Store. And I'll list a few affiliates here real quick before I go as well. You guys watch the channel, then um, you already know these and you can probably move along. But for the folks that are new, um, Jace Medical is a great source to be able to get your prescriptions. Um, and you know they, they have two different services, two different basic services. So one of them is you can get a pack, I call it the Jace case. It's like got five or six real common antibiotics for the types of antibiotics that you have to deal with in disaster situations. Then the other service they have is, is a long list of medications that they have gotten approved to be able, that people use on a daily basis and they can subscribe a, a year supply of that medicine to you ahead of time so that you have a um, a little supply there. So in case the pharmacy networks go down like it just did, you'll be able to continue taking your medicines without interruption. I think this is a great service. And um, if you use the discount code REALITY10, it'll save you 10 bucks on um, that order. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, next affiliate is nationalbodyarmor.com, um, and National Body Armor offers a kind of a civilianized version of a soft armor, you know, set that like a similar to what like a police officer would wear. Now it's not a full; they do have a full soft armor set, but it's it's what they call the Express T-shirt. And they've got two, let's got the ones, the VIP and ones the express. Um, and basically they've taken a, a front, it's like a backpack insert on the front and back for it. And they built it into a t-shirt. It's like a sleeveless t-shirt. You can put that on. So if you had to, uh, go into, you know, big city, or if you had to, you know, be out and about and doing things, you know, when, when the threat level was really heightened, you can put this on underneath your regular clothing like this and nobody would be able to tell that you're wearing it. Um, they're pretty comfortable and, you know, especially the VIP one, it's a lot more flexible and, and you could, you can wear it and it's, it's not that big of a deal. The, the thing that I like those for personally, where I see them being really useful is just sticking one right beside your bed. And that way, if there is a bump in the night and you have to get up and go out and address some sort of a threat at your house, you can just take that thing and toss that, that t-shirt on and it's dark colored. You can get them in a white or black, so you can get a black one. So at least, you know, you're not wearing like a white t-shirt or something when you're going down to uh, uh, deal with this threat. And then secondly, you also have some level of ballistic protection. Most home invasions, the vast majority of home invasions, uh, if the person is armed, they're not armed with a rifle, they're armed with a pistol. So it's unlikely that you're gonna need your level four, you know, plates and stuff. I mean, yeah, if you wanna keep that next to your bed or whatever, and that, that's fine, but um, it's just not, it's just not real, you know, realistic. But um, I think this is a, is a more, more suitable, civilianized, friendly kind of option. But my discount code over there is Reality Survival, and that'll save you 25%. They've also got uh, backpack inserts, and they do like a two for one sale. Um, and if you use that 25% discount, I think you can get two of them for somewhere around 175 bucks. And let's see, um, another another affiliate is uh, that that I think is going to be important in the in the you know, next year to two years or whatever is Refuge Medical. Um, this is the Bearfac 3.0 right there. Uh, I've also got the small of the back kit right down there. And then I've got the field medic pack back here too. Um, our 
as a sheepdog guy, right? As a, as a person who is, you know, lives a preparedness lifestyle and you want to be able to help people and you want to be able to um, be useful in a crisis, having some medical items on you is, it's really important. It's a really important aspect of preparedness. And um, there's probably going to be more and more incidents uh, where you're, you may have the opportunity to do that. And that might not be just, you know, uh, political violence. It could also just be because people are off their meds. You know, the supply chain gets disturbed because of, of the ongoing war and we can't get medicines. You know, a lot of them are derived from China or derived from, um, you know, the foundational elements that are made in China, even if they're made someplace else that the supply chain is extremely globalized when it comes to pharmaceuticals. So um, if people can't get their meds, sometimes they start falling off their meds. It causes psychotic breaks. You get increased instances of road rage and, and fighting and all that kind of stuff. You know, just, just people losing their shit in society and causing all kinds of problems, you know? It's probably what's causing this incident up here is somebody, you know, is, that a road rage incident, road rage incident, or something. Um, so, you know, having having the ability to treat wounds and 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 take care of people and all that kind of stuff, you know, during these kinds of incidents is, is important. And my discount code over there is uh, good for ten percent. and That's reality survival. So, anyway, guys, just uh, interesting stories today uh, that I I heard uh, waking up this morning. Wanted to share my thoughts with you on what's going on, and I I find the trend uh, in Europe and with Europe's leaders and the things that they're saying, the headlines that are coming out, to be pretty uh, indicative of a shift towards more kinetic violence over there in Ukraine and Russia, and um, that is not a good thing. Now, I mean, mutually assured destruction is still. You know, it's still a concept that exists, but anytime you've got um, us and or our allies, you know, in direct conflict with a nuclear armed power, everybody should be nervous. You know, if you haven't figured out where you would bunker during a nuclear event, then you're wrong. You, you should at least know, right? Like you don't have to go and buy a bunker and build one in your backyard or whatever but like watch my playlist on nuclear uh, war survival skills so you understand what's required and the kind of environment that you need to be in for at least two weeks um, and then if you don't have that environment in your home or in, in or around your neighborhood or you know whatever then you're gonna have to find some place that'll work for you that's really important um, because if if bombs did start flying you need to be ready ahead of time. You need to have a go bag packed. You need to, you know, um, be able to in less than 30 minutes, you know, really like to, you know, 15 to 20, you'd like to be able to grab your go. If you don't have a shelter in your house is what I'm saying. Uh, most people who have basements can shelter in their basement. But, um, if you, if you don't have that and, you need to get to shelter, then you should be able to do that in, like I said, very short order. Grabbing that go bag, getting to that location, making entry into that location, uh, and then securing that all up, right? Keeping it, you know, the fallout and stuff from blowing in. That all needs to happen within, like I said, definitely under 30 minutes. So there's a short window of time that you would have to do that. And, uh, you need to think about how you would go about that and plan ahead for it. If you're not planning ahead for those kinds of things right now, then you're just setting yourself up for failure later if something did happen. So anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, folks. Don't forget to live the six Ps, proper prior preparation, prevents poor performance. Stay safe.